We cannot control our death, but we can control how we live. Our lives are what we pay attention to. The rarest, purest form of generosity is our attention. Our attention is precious. Our attention taken to its highest degree is the same thing as prayer. It presupposes faith and love. So how we pay attention, how we spend our time is how we spend our lives. The power of fun. Welcome. 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 To celebrate. To celebrate. Party. Welcome to celebrate story. With my mom. My mom. With my mom. With my mom. With my wife. Julie Wagner. Julie Wagner. Julie Wagner. Julie Wagner. Steve and I recently went through, well, recently, it was actually last year now. Well, we finished it in... That's true. We did finish it recently. We started it. We started it a year ago, but we finished it recently. Yes, because the obstacle was being able to listen to it together. We did it audio and listen it together in the car. And I loved this book. Total five stars, which is probably not a surprise. I feel like it's right in a niche of books. Like within education, I love reading about the power of play. Like I can never get enough on those kinds of books. But this was outside of education. This was just the power of fun. And really the focus was adults. Like how can we recapture a spirit of playfulness and connection and flow that is true, actual fun, not fake fun. And the author is like, did such a fantastic job of going through like really defining what playfulness is, what connection is, what flow is, and like obstacle to those obstacles to those things. Even went through things like fun magnets. Like it just, it's such a great toolbox of information and inspiration to add more fun in your life. So I, I really loved going through the book. What did you think of the book? I like the book. Um, a lot of the book up front, probably what would you say the first quarter was talking about our phones. Yes. Um, the same author wrote a book called How to Break Up with Your Phone. Um, just went through some of the psychology that goes behind creating apps and gathering our attention. Um, and I think that's where that fake fun term came in that we think getting on Instagram and scrolling through or playing a game on your phone or doing something like that is fun. Um, but it's really what she calls fake fun. It's not meeting the true needs of what fun is supposed to do. Yeah. It's not really giving us life and filling us up. And I just, I need that message. I feel like this might be a book that I'll just keep revisiting the quotes and going back to. And I loved the fact that she specifically went in. So yeah, that first half was about how tech not used mindfully and attentively like robs us of true fun because we think we're getting fun, but it doesn't, we feel empty at the end of it rather than rejuvenated and filled back up and alive. And one of my favorite sections is she talked about the idea of flow because connection, so play and connection separately, I've read a lot about. And so those were like, yes, I mean, just like, you know, like a pep rally, like, okay, let's keep talking. But I really enjoyed her section. And I'd love to share a little bit more about some of the sections that stuck out to me about flow. I thought we could go through that. It's funny because the book talked a lot about flow, and I have a great feel for it um, of what it is, but can we kind of define it a little yes. tighter? Yes, and I don't have an exact quote from her book, but this is how I would define from what I remember what she said. It's that feeling of losing all track of time and all track of like insecurities, all track of like fears and anxieties, but just being in the zone of joy and creativity um, I think of how it compares to, to like that when our nervous system is in that calm state and we're creative and we're connected and we're calm and you're, you're just in a zone. You're just ha- having pure joy in a zone, not really conscious of any of the things that typically hold you back from fun. Okay. And I just, I love that because I want, I don't have enough of that in my life and I would like to carve out more space to do that more often. And I think one of the things that really hit me is um, just this idea that flow requires to be fully present and distractions become this flow killer. 
and judgments become this like flow fun killer and how to have this true fun, which involves this flow, but also involves playfulness and connectedness. It's more likely to happen when it has space to unfurl. And this one kind of like, I don't know, makes me sigh because it's like, how do you create more space with, I mean, we all have full lives, but we all have 24 hours. And it's like, and then I'm very inspired when I think about, I have a friend who's going through a very, very tough season with some health, from very serious health things with her son. And it's like, she makes so much space for her creativity to get into a flow for painting. And it's like, that's so every time I hear that she's been painting, I'm so inspired because it's like, how hard did she have to fight to like, how many no's did she have to say to make space for that creativity to get in a flow? Because it's, I think that's the mistake we made. Like we packed up our podcast stuff and went to the beach because for me, I don't know if you would agree with this for you too, but for me, podcasting is a state of fun and connection and flow. I agree. Yeah. yeah like we'll get in this, like we're, we'll just get rolling and it like, it just, it's so fun, like true fun. And then I think our mistake at the beach, we packed up all the, well, we as in <laughs> you, you packed up all the microphones um, and we unpacked them as in you unpacked them and got them all set up. And it's like, but we only had like, 37 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm rushed. And we were trying to record this like actual episode, but it's like, I did not feel playful. <laughs> I did not feel a sense of flow. No flow. Yeah, no flow. Because I'm like, we have got to get on the road. Because when I'm ready to do a car trip, it's like, I'm just thinking like, mm -hmm. the longer it takes me to get on the road, the longer it takes me to get home. So yeah, I think that that space for play and flow to unfurl is, that's a huge challenge for me for flow, for sure. But if we stay on this topic for a minute with podcasting, because it does take time. So if we if we turn out a 30, 45 minute episode, there's two hours around that, um, which takes a, a ton of time. And it, it it takes planning and it takes purpose um, just to to say this is what we're going to do at this time until this time. Everyone needs to have something to do where they're not knocking on the door or <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. So like right now it's tech time in our house. So that keeps basically everybody tied to a screen <laughs> for a couple hours and we're able to- Where they're having fake fun. Yes, they're well, having we fake have fun. Real fun. We're up here having real fun. Kids, you're listening. I know you are. <laughs> yes, that's- And you know, I give you credit on this and I know I have been very resistant. Like listeners, you got to know Steve Wagner is- the master scheduler and logistical manager. Like, like for his job, he'll take like four. I remember one time he came home with like this, like several inch thick packet of like this huge sign project for UNC Asheville just to bid every single sign, like all the measurements, all the fonts, all the details. Like, and you just dutifully went through that a whole pack. Like, no one has the level of attention to detail that you have that I've ever met. And like you have pushed, wait, you're scrunching your eyes at me and I'm complimenting you. I appreciate the compliment. I just think there's more detailed people out there. Oh, you just thought I was getting a little bit exaggerative? Right. Well, no one I've met. No one you've met. No one I've met. Okay. Okay. Gee whiz. Sorry. You I just can't really... even take a compliment. You can't even take a compliment. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, what I'm saying is I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell a story here. This is celebrate story, Steve Wagner. Anyways, what I'm saying is he is so good with details. And at, co during the COVID time, he was like, we need a spreadsheet and a schedule that goes in the fridge every single day. And I was like, no, we don't. This is my area and you need a backup. This is my lane. That's exactly what she said to you. No, no, no. <laughs> At the surface. So. No, you said it out loud. Before. Oh, did I say you it out loud? It. I mean, I think it took a while to get there, but my whole point is I have seen the light. I am saved into the scheduling cult. Now I'm on board of scheduling. Now it's like I truly had an epiphany and I think that my obstacles or a light bulb, I guess I was revealed another blind spot. It was like there was a day where I was hesitant because I started to reluctantly come around. I mean, I didn't do it for a while, but then I reluctantly, and I will say too, I do love he'll put on the top of the schedule, which is a fun factor. He'll look up what national day is it today and he'll put at the top of the schedule like 
last Thursday was like National Tell a Story Day, which was very exciting for me since I actually have a podcast called Celebrate Story. So I mean, it was just a moment of fun instantaneously. Wait, I think I put that schedule up. But anyways, the point still stands. Getting excited, telling you about all the ins and outs of this schedule. But my point is, so we'll, you know, have something different. And like our son's girlfriend is like, one of the first things I love to do is come over and see what national day it is today. So anyways, just like a tiny micro dose of fun is I believe what the author calls that. And the thing is, is I was so resistant and so resistant. And I have now come to really rely on that schedule because I don't have to answer six times what time tech time is. And even things like on Fridays, I'll include the whole weekly clean list and like exactly who's doing what what weekly clean. And then when I go to the Friday tab, I just reprint Friday, which none of this actually sounds fun, y'all. But what I'm getting to, this is all work. But what I'm getting to is I had this moment to see this blind spot in myself of like, I'm so reluctant to schedule things because I just want to keep everything open to like please everyone. And by doing that, I leave myself out and I leave planning in spaces to do the things that matter to me. And it's just, I didn't see that until I saw that. And it's like, I am really going to work hard on that, on scheduling. And I have been like... You have. You've been... I haven't made a schedule in a while. You do it most days. Yes. And it it, it is working for us. I'm sure it's not for everybody, but it for me, that is a tool to make sure that I put on... If I don't plan for it, then my large family and all the endless things I volunteer for will eat up every last minute and I will not have those spaces for flow. And we have a number of kids that if they see a hole in that schedule, they like to fill it. Yes, they like Like, to fill it. Oh, we can do this now. Yes, you You can can take take me here. here, And you can take me there and you can take me everywhere. You can take me in a car. You can take me in a box. You can take me with a fox. I'm sorry. It it just started coming out. I got you. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed that. Okay. And to take it the last 5% or whatever percentage it is. um, 7.2. 7.2. I've been measuring. You make time. (laughs) If something's important to you, you you need to make time for it. And you will make time for it. Um, So like today, podcasting was on the schedule. Um, We had tech time and podcasting. If you want to see your friends more, you have to make time to see your friends. And in relationship, in the connection part of of fun, I guess, if you're not, if you never have time to do the things you want to do with the people you want to do it with, they're going to see that as you don't have time for them. It's so true. And they're in the back of, I know it's in the back of my head that you prioritize what's important to you. So if you don't seem like a priority to the people around you, you're going to naturally think you're not important. To them. It's true. We communicate our values of the people in our lives with how we choose. And then and, and might, and it might not be true, but if you're not keeping that space open to connect and to have fun and to, to get together, you're just going to run out of that time. Even though you may care deeply for that person and want to be with them, then you're just not prioritizing that time correctly. And those relationships sometimes go away. It's so true. And that's so, it's, that's very, that's a challenging topic for me because it's so really out of a sense of security. I think I love having a large network of people, but it's also a sense of security. But what I truly long for is a smaller number of deeper relationships. And it's like, I'm the last to admit that I have a finite amount of relational energy. And that's, that's. And time. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a good time to stop and make sure everybody understands that we don't have this figured out. No, no, no. (laughs) It's just intriguing to us. I think Julie's better at fun than I am most of the time, Um, making making songs up with the kids to get them to clean up or drawing chalk in the uh, um, to teach them English or reading out in the street. I am definitely drawn to micro doses of fun, but I. It's like, I heard that expression once of like, you can handle a whole lot of drain if you have a whole lot of fill. And I am definitely starving for more fills of play. Like I'm, 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 my tank is like needing the fill up for sure. So we don't have it figured out, but there are some things that we pulled out of the book that 
kind of explain why this is a pursuit of ours. Um, we're just going to go through some of them here. You want to start? Yes. And then also that we'll invite you, like one of the fun parts for me about this podcast is, of course, first and foremost, connecting with Steve and myself. Like, what do I want to say? Like, I have a deep need to be heard. And it's it's fun to sit here and record it and and declare that it matters to us. And then it just feels like overflowing fun when you guys write paragraphs of responses sometimes it like blows me away of like this is what i thought and thank you so much for sharing this so like by all means share with me where you are on your fun journey because i love connecting with you as listeners so these are some of the benefits for us and join us if you too have an empty fun tank and need more fun for these reasons so we'll kind of go back and forth on these fun shapes the brain, opens the imagination, and invigorates the soul. Oh, I love that one so much. It is so true. I feel the truth of that one. This one I also love. True fun isn't a distraction from our problems, but a solution to our problems. Play lifts people out of the mundane. And a life without play would hardly be worth living. And play is like oxygen all around, only noticed when missing. And I love this one. When we stop playing, we start dying. I love this because we live in a culture that fears and denies the aging process. And it's like, I just want to be, I want to embrace the aging process for the gift that it is and just continue to play more and more. I mean, that's, I know, an aspirational goal, but... That's the target on the wall. Play is a string which we tie our memories and friendships together. I love that. You know, and I think with, I tend to see this more in guys. uh, Maybe that's just because I'm a guy, but (laughs) men typically make, seem to make closer friendships when you're doing something active together. Um, Whether it's, you know, working out or playing a sport or camping or fishing or whatever. Um, Physical activity tends to help the close tie together. Well, it makes me think of the beach. Like it feels, I mean, the beach was only you and I went away with all the kids and teens and young adults just, what is it? Five days ago. And it's like already what sticks out to me were those moments of play. Like when at sunset, when y'all were playing football and Boaz is flying kites, like, or playing pickleball and tennis and taking up a massive amount of courts, like those moments of play mm-hmm. really do tire memories together. It's so true. And key to healthy aging is relationships, relationships, and relationships. And these, this is one last one for me that's kind of like connected together. So flow in true fun produces connection and is contagious. It steps us out of the boundaries of the ego. And in that state of flow, we don't fear failure. And then when we are connected in that flow and we laugh, we breathe more deeply. That last part I love so much. When we laugh, we breathe more deeply. Laughter endorses endorses endorphins, which help deal with physical pain. And the more we laugh together, the more connected and less lonely we feel. Oh, I hunger for more laughter. And I think that's a good place to leave it because I think that's, that's what we're looking for. Fun, laughter, relationships. And yeah, and before we totally wrap up, I will encourage you if, to either read, you know, check out the book if you're interested. Um, it's by Catherine Price, The Power of Fun. I got it from the library first, and then we ended up getting it on audio when we decided it, to do it together. And she has a cool free um, t- fun toolkit that even if you don't want to read the book, I found the toolkit was really fun. <laughs> it produced great conversation. Like she goes through, like you have a fun compatibility quiz in there. She has a fun magnet worksheet. She has a section, my favorite section in her fun toolkit, which you can get from going to her website and we'll link it in the show notes. And she goes through all the fun factors and it produced like an interesting conversation for Steve and I, because we didn't realize when we went through all these fun factors, like there's like physicality and nature and intellectual stimulation and silliness and music and creativity and a challenge and learning and leading and teamwork and community and sensuality. Like there's all these 
fun factor things that you can discuss. Like, is this a fun factor to me? Does this like, how does this bring out fun? And it's different for all of us. And so it was a really, I enjoyed the exercise where we realized how different we were in that. Yeah. Cause we're very different. So it's, it's hard to find things that it is fun for both of us. It's so true. Uh, cause... Because we have different needs and different wants. So. Yeah. And it was helpful to see that, like the physicality, like we both are drawn to physical things, but you want it to be competitive and mm. I want it to be cooperative. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's tricky to find that. And so, yeah, but there's so many fun um, discussions that launch from that. So I hope you have the most fun summer ever that rejuvenates and revives and restores and connects you to the people you love. And please share um, this podcast with those you love and challenge them to laugh with you more. And I don't know if it'd be true fun for you, but it would be true fun for me. So this might be a big ask, but if you could rate and review the podcast, I would be so grateful. Thank you so much for listening. It is fun to podcast and hear your response.